I was wondering, what is the most extreme aftermath you've experienced after a big night out? I mean, pretty extreme ones. <laughs> Welcome back to Glamour with me, Josh Smith, and today we are joined by the living legend and the queen of period dramas. It's Kira Knightley. Hello. Thanks. I've never mean, been called a living legend before. That's what? exciting. Thank you. Now, what I really loved about this film is the exploration of mental health and how yep. if you don't discuss it, it gets worse, the problems worsen. Why do you think it's so important as a role model yourself to come out and speak about these kind of problems? I think it's very important that uh, that particularly young people, but actually everybody knows that everyone breaks, <laughs> mm. that it's sort of part of life, that uh, what you have to do at that point is acknowledge it and ask for help, mm. if you're lucky enough to be able to get that help, mm -hmm. um, but that there is no shame in, in admitting that you can't cope. At a certain point, yeah. and particularly with me and my career, you know, you want to try and be helpful and say, yeah, I know this is all terribly glamorous and hey, look at this dress and all yeah. the rest of it. But you know, behind that, of course, there's a human being. And of course, mm. there are moments where I haven't been able to cope. And I've been really lucky that I could afford the help that I needed when when I got it. And really lucky that I had a family there that were very, very supportive. But um, ultimately, it's nothing to feel ashamed about. Mm. And I think particularly with men, you know, there's a big kind of feeling that you shouldn't have these emotions mm. and you should be able to cope and you should be able to man up. And yeah, definitely, that's part of this, this film. Particularly particularly in that generation, that silent generation that just didn't talk about it. Mm. And I think men do have to acknowledge their well, emotions. They do. And they do have to talk about it. And it's okay to cry, because yeah. you're a human being. Like how I cried in this film. Like how you I cried like in how I film. cried. You play such a strong female role in this. Mm. And I think so many people come in here and ask you about that line, about what's it like to play a strong wife role? But then no one's ever really gonna go in and ask the guy who plays the husband, what's it like to play a powerful husband role? When you come into yeah. interviews in 2019, yeah. do you still experience like sexist questions like that? Yeah, of course. I mean, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the, and it's the same one. You know, you ask a woman, how does she balance mm. being a mother? How do I play this role because I'm a mother? I'm sure nobody's gone into, you know, Jason and gone, yeah. oh, did you play this role because you're a father? Mm. You know, I mean, it, and how do you balance your mm. work with being a father? You know, it's still not something that we ask men. Um, and yet it's constantly something there. We're on completely different playing fields still in 2019. We don't even get paid as much as you guys for doing exactly the same job. Well, you know, so I think we've still got yeah. a way to go in, in multiple different directions. <laughs> and we need more male allies. Definitely always. For sure. Always. Very, very Boys. important. Get involved. Exactly. In the I was going to say man up, but actually just 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 be yourselves and just come be, be yourselves. friends. It does get a bit racy. Yeah. This film. It's yeah. like a period drama with a side of like raunchy sauce. I like the idea of raunchy sauce. sauce. Yeah, sure. Mm. But how do you approach like coming to sex scenes now? I'm sort of like a sergeant major. I'm very. I completely take control because generally speaking, I'm the only woman in the room. Mm. I'm very clear about what I'm comfortable with, what I'm not comfortable with. I have things in my contract. I have final say over the cut. Um, and I'm very much like, exactly what do you want? How is that shot working? What are we doing next? You know, I basically take control of it, but then I'm very lucky because I'm in a position where I can do that. Mm. And I think really what everyone's trying to do is protect those actresses mainly who are in positions where they can't do that. And that's where we've got to be protective as an industry over young up and coming actresses. You know, so, um, but yeah, I mean, the way that I, I deal with those things is by being kind of as bullish as possible, the least sexy as possible. <laughs> and you know, we get through it, but hey, it looks sexy on camera. No, it does so look sexy on camera. It doesn't matter, right? I was like, Girl, I was like, you're working she, it. She's going for it. She's going for Not it. Not my body. It was a body double. Oh. Yeah, but wonderful body. <laughs> wonderful body. Not mine, but like wonderful body. Oh, great. <laughs> What's so amazing about that sex scene in particular is it's used as like a powerful narrative for the woman. Yeah. Instead of it being about the man so much, because yeah, it's like her right. liberation. Yeah, you're absolutely in right. A way. Yeah. Because how liberating do you feel now? When because obviously you've gone, everyone goes through body journeys and relationships yeah. with their bodies as they go through their career. Yeah. How's your relationship with your body changed? throughout your career, would you say? I'm sort of, a, I'm, I'm at peace with my body. Yeah. You know, it did something quite amazing. It it, it built yes. and carried and birthed mm. and fed a human being, yeah. an actual real life human being. So I'm like, it's all fine. It doesn't look like it did before. Mm -hmm. And maybe it will never be on film again. But 
I'm absolutely fine with the way it is. In yeah. my private life, I'm very happy yeah. with it. It did well. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's such a good, amazing message to send out there to young girls and young guys as well. It's to be like, you know, be comfortable in your bodies. It serves you so well. Well, look, it's the it's only one that you've tool. got. Yeah. It is a very powerful tool. Don't wish it to be something else. It's never going to be something else. Mm. It's going to be what you've got, but it's going to be all right. Yeah. Look and after it. I was wondering, what is the most extreme aftermath you've experienced after a big night out? I mean, pretty extreme ones, <laughs> you know. I'm in my 30s now. Yeah. I had I had a nice, nice good run of some pretty heavy hangovers. Yeah. What's your ultimate hangover cure? <sighs> it's basically you just have to order lots of pizza. Yeah. I mean, noodles. I always like noodles mm. on a hangover. But um, I mean, and 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 just staying in bed, which is now impossible because I have a child and there's no way yeah. she's going to let me. But you know, it, so make the most of it now. That's life according <laughs> to Kira Knightley right there. Boom.